Hi guys, in this module we will be discussing what is a graph data structure, why it is important to learn a graph data structure and what are the various applications and how you can build some uh, graph algorithms, okay? So a graph is a data structure that is like a network. You can see it's a network containing five vertices and also there are some edges that connect these two nodes, okay? So it's a non-linear data structure. It's not like a list. It's not like an array, but it's a network-like data structure. Now you might think, uh, why do we need to create such a data structure? So this data structure is really important and uh, it a lot of problems uh, can appear in interviews related to graphs, but those problems are relatively easy as compared to problems that you might find in coding competitions like ICPC or hiring challenges or Google Kickstart. So it, it, it's a very important uh, data structure from the uh, competition point of view because if you talk about ICPC, at least one or two problems you will get on graphs definitely, okay? So we will learn what is a graph data structure and how we can uh, build a couple of graph algorithms that are quite common and popular. And we will also see how it is used in problem solving. But not just that, graph also has a lot of real life uh, applications, okay? So a lot of real world problems can be solved using graphs. So this makes graphs a very important data structure to learn and master. So let us discuss, uh, discuss about these applications one by one. So the first application is very common. It's about Google Maps. So if you think about the whole world as a network of landmarks or as a network of cities, you can represent each location by a vertex and you will find there are edges that connect two cities or two vertices. So that makes this problem uh, that makes this as a graph problem okay so let me show you if you want to uh, right so let's say if you want to uh, go from delhi to mumbai or delhi to agra you will have lot of cities in between them and you have, will have lot of roads connecting between them so we can call all those conne uh, connections as edges and there can edges can be flights also because uh, if you are taking a flight from delhi to mumbai or Delhi to Goa, then that represents there is a connection from Delhi to another node Mumbai. So that's where graph comes into picture. And you might be interested in finding out, okay, what is the path that takes the minimum time? Okay, what is the path that takes the minimum cost? So all those problems can be formulated as graph problems. Apart from it, you have social networks, okay? So all social networking websites uh, like LinkedIn, Quora, Instagram, they also build a graph of users. So all the people, they will form vertices of the graph and all those who are connected, they will form edges of the graph. And you can use this kind of a graph to solve various problems. For example, you want to generate your LinkedIn newsfeed. So you generally see, okay, your connection has like this post. So where does it come from? It comes from this graph data structure, okay? So you can use it to find uh, mutual friends also. Like on Facebook, if you have two people who are connected and if you also know uh, what are the neighbors of uh, person X and person Y, you can also find out, okay, these are the mutual friends of uh, these two persons. So like that. And you can also use uh, graphs in designing circuits like PCB design. So maybe you have a lot of resistors spread across on a electronic board and you want to connect them through a wire and you want to minimize the total length of wire that goes on the circuit. So that can be used uh, so that the packing on of the board can be done in an efficient manner and you can use less metal. So again, this can be formulated as a graph problem and you also have uh, routers spread across the world. So when you access a website, let's say you're sitting in India and you are accessing a server from which you're getting data and that data is coming through a network of routers uh, spread across all of the world. So if, if you want to minimize the total time that a website will load on your system, you need to optimize the flow of packets through this network of routers. So that is again a kind of a shortest path problem that um, graphs around these routers can use, okay? And also, 
if you talk about a uh, delivery route problem for example school vans or the amazon delivery vans uh, they also uh, they start from a warehouse they go to different number of cities and they come back to the warehouse so in this case it's not going from a source to destination it's going from source to source but covering all the orders that lie in between the cities okay so that's where graphs can help you to solve such kind of problems apart from it uh, you can have problems in which you have to resolve some dependencies for example if you want to run your c++ code on a system that is a task installing sublime text is a task installing gcc is a task and installing an os is a task so you need to um, find out in which order i should do these tasks so that there are no conflicts obviously there are certain dependencies if you want to uh, install sublime text then you must have an operating system if you want to install a g++ compiler then you must have an os so you can see there would be uh, some connections between these tasks and also there would be fixed order for example first install the os then you install the sublime text then you install uh, the compiler and then you execute a c++ code so you cannot do these tasks randomly so we will see this this is done using a algorithm called topological sorting so then graphs are also used in deep learning so if we talk about neural networks then all neurons can be treated as uh, vertices and there can be connections between them those can be connect, uh, called as edges so frameworks like tensorflow they also build computation graphs for optimizing different calculations so there also uh, graphs are used in artificial intelligence to lot of, to simplify lot of mathematical calculations and do lot of work in the back end also if you talk about a web page or a web document that is also organized in the form of a tree so it's not a graph exactly but it's a tree but we also know every tree is a graph so if you see this tree structure you will find there are nodes and these nodes have certain elements so certain divs certain h1 tags certain list elements so when you work with javascript you generally need to fetch some elements from this uh, dom model okay so you need to traverse this tree so you uh, you may need to do some kind of a tree traversal to fetch different types of elements from this tree and this is widely used in building web applications okay and apart from it uh, several graph algorithms are also used in image processing such as tasks like segmentation and you can treat each pixel as a vertex and connections between neighboring pixels uh, they can be treated as edges okay and you can also build some tools for paint for example if you want to build a paint bucket tool and if you want to fill some color in a region then you drop a color at that particular point and it will eventually spread out to all neighboring pixels until you found a boundary line okay so here also you can use graphs to solve this kind of a problem so there are lo a lot many applications and we will be discussing some of these applications we will be building some of the algorithms in the coming videos so let's begin and start learning about graph data structure and how to solve problems using graphs